Yesterday, a few members of the Senate talked about the investigation into the abuse of Iraqi prisoners by U.S. forces. This starts out with comments from Illinois Senator Richard Durbin. Mr. President, there isn't an American today who woke up and didn't hear the lead story, a story which has frankly brought us to a, a position of embarrassment with the ab abuses that have been sadly uh, documented and have been spread across the world relating to the treatment of Iraqi prisoners. The word is that the President of the United States is going to address the Arab nations through their own television network to talk about his disappointment and, and I hope, uh, an apology for what has occurred. But Mr. President, we have a responsibility here on Capitol Hill. We have a responsibility in the United States Senate. And I believe that we should move and move decisively. Number one, to entertain and pass a resolution on this floor that makes it clear that what happened in that Iraqi prison is not what America is all about, and that those responsible for it, from those whose photographs were taken all the way up the chain of command, need to be held accountable for their actions. There is nothing less than that that should be tolerated. Secondly, the Secretary of Defense, Don Rumsfeld, should be appearing before a committee on Capitol Hill on a timely basis as quickly as possible to explain exactly what happened. It is absolutely incredible that the Secretary of Defense had no knowledge of this event nor of the investigation that followed. And finally, let me say this. Many of us believe that what happened last week with the Secretary of Defense appearance on Capitol Hill was extremely troubling. Last Thursday, Secretary of Defense Don Rumsfeld appeared in a classified briefing on Capitol Hill telling the Senate membership the state of affairs in Iraq. It was the same day that this story was to be aired on 60 Minutes 2, the story relating to Iraqi prisoners. The fact is the Secretary testified without even indicating to the members of the Senate that this story existed or was about to be disclosed to the American people. That is unacceptable. The Secretary of Defense needs to return to Capitol Hill tomorrow to give another classified briefing to the members of the Senate to tell us exactly what transpired, why he did not disclose this to members of the Senate, and why there is this veil of secrecy in this administration when it comes to one of the most troubling stories that's emerged since our invasion of Iraq. I have spoken to our Democratic leader, Tom Daschle. He has been in conversation and dialogue with Senator Frist, the Republican leader, and has an agreement that all three things that I've just outlined will occur. A resolution on the floor relative to the Iraqi prison scandal, Secondly, an appearance by Secretary Rumsfeld in open hearing before a committee as soon as possible. And third, a request that the Secretary come to Congress on a classified basis and meet with us tomorrow, before this week ends, before this Senate leaves, to explain to us what has happened in this terrible episode. Now, those who are accountable for this need to be held accountable, whether they are the soldiers involved in it and right up the chain of command, the leadership that failed. And if we do not do this, frankly, we are jeopardizing the security of this country and the safety of our men and women in uniform who still continue to struggle in Iraq to find peace and stability in that country. We need to move now. We need to move decisively. We need to show the leadership on Capitol Hill, which has failed to this point. And this is the way to do it through these three approaches. Mr. President, Senator from Nevada. through the chair to my friend from Illinois, I appreciate very much your statement. I'm hopeful and confident that agreement on those three items will be reached today at the earliest possible date. But I do say this to my friend. I am terribly disappointed, not only in what we did not hear from the Secretary of Defense, but also we had there more brass than could make up. The senator from Illinois I'll has expired. I'll take one minute from Senator Schumer's time. And I think I have seven, six and a half minutes or seven and a half. I yield a minute of my time to the senator from Nevada. So there, was more, without objection. there was more brass in 407 last Thursday than would make up a band. Four stars all over the place, not, including the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And not a single one of those people in the chain of command that Senator talked about even breathed the word of the impending scandal that they knew about as they briefed us. I think it is a terrible situation when we meet in secret up in 407 and something as scandalous as American troops killing, killing, we now have confirmed two homicides, killing prisoners of war in addition to humiliating them through sexual 
pictures and doing other things that I think speak so poorly of our United States military that I am Time of the sick into my stomach. Time has expired. We'll take, one, one, we'll, consent we'll, for one, we'll, additional take, we'll take one minute from Senator Bro. I ask unanimous consent for one additional minute Without through objection. Senator Bro's time. I would agree completely with the Senator from Nevada. And let me tell you, I have a feeling of embarrassment and also sadness. Sadness for the thousands of men and women in uniform risking their lives today, serving us so nobly in Iraq, who sadly are going to be swept into this vortex if we're not careful. We have to make certain the soldiers who are responsible for this, as well as their leaders in command, are brought out and held accountable so that our fine men and women who are fighting in the military in Iraq do not have to bear this burden. They are our best and brightest. We owe them the greatest respect, but let us be honest. What happened here is not typical of America, certainly not typical of our military, and unless we are forthright and open in accountability, it is going to sweep all of them into this veil of blame, and that would be unfortunate. Fired. Senator from New York. Thank you, Mr. President. First, let minutes. me thank my colleagues from uh, Nevada and Illinois for what they have said here. The bottom line is, of course, very little could be more counterproductive to this war effort uh, than uh, what has happened here. And the best way to deal with it is come clean and come clean quickly. Find out how often it happened, where it happened, how high up the chain of command it went, and exercise it, get rid of it, because the overwhelming majority of our troops and of our military leadership is this to them, this is abhorrent. And the sooner we can exercise this cancer, the better off we will all be. Keeping this secret is not going to work. Uh, it's going to come out. It has come out. And uh, I join my colleagues. I hope that we can get Secretary Rumsfeld to come back before us very quickly and give us a full and complete briefing on what has happened. Uh, that should happen this week, because last week, as was mentioned by a few of my colleagues, uh, he gave a briefing in room 407 and didn't even mention this, even though it was going to appear on TV uh, the night before. And if all of us who care so much about our troops and their risking their lives and their bravery hate to see any stain upon them, and the quicker we deal with this, the better it will be for everybody. Don't hide it. Don't underplay it. Just get it out, exercise it, and go forward. And that's what I think we have to do, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President. And I hope Mr. Rumsfeld will come before us and come before us quickly. I just wanted to come, I had hoped to come to the floor when Senator Durbin spoke with regard to the need for a Senate response on the matter of prisoner abuse. Uh, Senator Durbin related, as I understand it, some conversations that I have had uh, with the distinguished majority leader. And I would just confirm that I have had some very good conversations with the majority leader about the actions that uh, Senator Durbin outlined. The majority leader shares my view, and I know he'll want to speak to the matter himself, the Senate needs to address this matter. Uh, asking Senator, uh, I should say, Secretary Rumsfeld to come to 407 this week so that we can ask questions directly and ask and clarify why it was that when they met with us last week we were not told of this information and share with us as much as he and the Pentagon knows about the degree of abuse, uh, what other circumstances may be involved, and uh, uh, what, uh, whatever has been learned so far through the investigation and a full airing of the report. He has also indicated his view that the Secretary ought to come before the appropriate committees and testify with regard to these actions so the American people have, have uh, a, a better understanding of what we know and what actions are being taken to address this circumstance so that we can say without equivocation it won't happen again and that we can reiterate to the world community that, uh, that this is not the practice, not the policy, and certainly uh, not in keeping with the character of the American people. And finally, Senator Frist and I have talked extensively about the importance of uh, passing a resolution this week uh, denouncing this abuse and expressing our abhorrence on a bipartisan basis uh, and uh, sending as clear a message as we can 
uh, to all uh, the world community that uh, this is unacceptable behavior. It is not uh, in keeping with our practice, with our philosophy, with our character, and uh, we want as much as possible uh, to rectify what damage has been done and to assure those who would uh, uh, in some way make, uh, make any effort to use this for their own purposes as a, an anti-propaganda tool, an anti-American propaganda tool, that that, uh, that will not be tolerated. This is not America. This is not the practice of our country. This is not the practice of 99.9 percent of the military who are serving so admirably in Iraq today. They deserve better than that. And to tarnish their reputation and the contribution they have made is abhorrent as well. So, Mr. President, we need to make sure that those points are made. But first and foremost, we need to have a better understanding. We're shooting in the dark. We have no information other than what we've read in the newspapers. And that's unacceptable. Secretary Rumsfeld ought to be here. He ought to explain himself in the Pentagon. And we need to say, after having acquired that information, as unequivocally and with whatever authority we can, and that this will never happen again. I yield the floor. Mr. President, Mr. President before the distinguished minority leader uh, departs, um, I, I join, as does the majority leader, in this request. As you may know, yesterday the Armed Services Committee had a two-hour briefing with the top uh, military leaders from the Department of the Army. Uh, Senator Levin and I felt it important to proceed very quickly. Following that, uh, we uh, had a press conference in which both Senator Levin and I said the need for the Secretary of Defense, Mr. Rumsfeld, to come up. Uh, I've been working on that uh, steadily, and I, I can assure the leader, uh, having talked to my leader last night, uh, Senator Frist, uh, presumably shortly after the two of you had uh, discussed it, Senator Frist uh, has joined uh, with you and others to get that done. I would anticipate, however, and I think it's probably wise, that the President of the United States, Mr. President, is going to address this issue, and I think immediately following that, I would presume, say, we could hope to uh, have the Secretary before the Armed Services Committee, and then subject to the uh, leadership, or perhaps uh, he could uh, work with other senators in another forum later that sometime tomorrow. That would be my advice. And I want to commend the leader, my good friend, uh, the leader, for his incorporation of these remarks, the need for every senator, as they address this issue, to reflect on the, as you said, 99.99 percent extraordinary professionalism and courage rendered by the men and women of the armed forces, not just in Iraq, not just in Afghanistan, but all over the world. And they in no way should have their wonderful works and sacrifices of themselves and their families in any way tarnished by these serious allegations. I thank my good friend and the leader from South Dakota. Mr. President, if I could just respond, I thank the distinguished chair of the Armed Services Committee for his, his comments and for the uh, work that he has already undertaken to ensure that many of these issues can be addressed. Uh, he has uh, shown real leadership here, and I applaud that and look forward to working with him in the days ahead. I yield the floor. Mr. President, I thank my good friend and colleague of many years. Mr. President, I should like to now proceed, if the chair would kindly advise the senator the amount of time under control on this side of the aisle. Yes, sir. There's 30 minutes in morning business um, under the control of the majority leader, their designee. Thank you. I should like to take approximately 10 minutes of that time. Mr. Senator President. from Virginia is recognized. Mr. President, I have, uh, in my colloquy with the distinguished Democratic leader, uh, reviewed my great concern that as senators, indeed as people all over the United States, indeed the world, wish to address the extraordinary, tragic information flowing about alleged atrocities perpetrated by U.S. forces and perhaps others that they incorporate in every statement a reference to the courage, the sacrifice of the men and women, the armed forces of our nation, of the coalition forces that are fighting with us in Iraq as well as Afghanistan and elsewhere around the world, and indeed the impact of this 
tragic series of revelations on their families back here at home. Be ever mindful that here in the United States and in the homes of the coalition forces and other nations are the wives, the children, the mothers, the fathers, the others who are in strong support of their loved one beyond the shores. And this story hits home ever so, ever so hard with them. So I do hope my colleagues and others as they address this issue, take the time to include reference to the valiant work being done by uniformed people of the armed forces of many nations and their families. The allegations of mistreatment by, of the prisoners by some members of the armed forces, if proven, represent an appalling and totally unacceptable breach of military regulations and conduct that could and I repeat, could undermine much of the courageous work and sacrifices by our forces in Iraq and around the world in the war on terror. The vast majority of our men and women, as the distinguished Democratic leader said, 99.99% fully understand their obligations to conduct themselves in accordance with military, national, and international standards, and most particularly the standards of professional conduct that are taught each soldier, sailor, airman, and marine of our forces. Mistreatment of prisoners, no matter what their reason for incarceration, is not what the uniform of the United States stands for. It's not what the United States stands for as a nation, and it's not the way for anyone who wears that uniform to conduct themselves. The Armed Services Committee received a briefing from senior Army officials yesterday. We did receive, I think, a considerable amount of information that is not freely in the press today, but I think in due course that information will be and should be shared publicly. But nevertheless, we have probe, begun our probe of this particular case, and uh, I commend the committee for its actions so far. We had three quarters of the members of the committee in attendance yesterday, and there was a very vigorous uh, questioning of the Army witnesses. While informative, the briefing revealed the need for more extensive public hearings from civilian and military officials, and I've made requests for such hearings. Immediately following our hearing yesterday, I was joined by Senator Levin, the ranking member. We always must remember that under our Constitution, it is very clear in the long traditions of this country the civilians control the United States military. They have the ultimate responsibility of the actions of the men and women in uniform. They're the ones that promulgate the orders down from the Commander-in-Chief, the President of the United States, to the unit commanders. And consequently, the civilians must accept that responsibility. Secretary Rumsfeld, in a press conference yesterday, addressed the nation. And as I said, I have been in consultation with him in his office about an appearance which I would anticipate would take place very shortly following the public statements to be issued, I believe, today by the President of the United States. I fully believe that the most constructive course of action at this point is to fully understand, I repeat, to fully understand the extent of the problem, no matter how much time it requires to gather all the facts, no matter how difficult and where we must go to get all of those facts no matter how embarrassing those facts may be. Get the facts out and the story so that not only the Congress of the United States can reach its judgments, but indeed the American public and others around the world, because this is an around the world story at this point in time. Our great nation has had a symbol of freedom and hope for its entire existence. The world looks to us as the standard bearer, the standard bearer of how best to bring about freedom for others, how best to protect those values which we hold so dearly and for which generations of men and women have gone forth from these shores, not to conquer, not to take land, but simply have gone forth in the cause of freedom. I believe in due course 
once this story is fully understood, we will have the ability as a nation to apologize through our chief executive, the president, through others, through this humble senator for the actions taken. And most importantly, the assurances to the world that we will not see a repeat. We will not ever again see the repeat. I've had the privilege to have had association with the men and women of the uniform for over 50 years. When as a young sailor in the closing year of World War II, I began my career in the training commands of the United States Navy. And I've had many opportunities in the ensuing years to work with the men and women of the United States military. During the war in Korea, I served as a Marine. During the Vietnam War, I was privileged to serve over five years in the Navy Secretariat. And we have our problems during that conflict. But I doubt any of those problems parallel in seriousness the consequence of this framework of allegations today. And therefore, it is a duty upon us to leave no stone unturned to reveal all the facts and to give the assurances it will not happen again and to place in place into the military such authorities as they need. And I doubt if there's anything under statute law that needs to be added. But the authorities they need, the clarity of those laws and regulations, the training that should follow from it so that this incident can never be repeated. Again, as we proceed over the next days and weeks, we must be mindful of the millions of American men and women in uniform, past and present, who have honorably, who had great sacrifice, had defended the laws, the rules, the traditions, and the values enshrined in the U.S. Constitution in the American way of life. The actions of a few must not be allowed to tarnish that image. And of course, I'm very mindful of the fact that at Memorial Day in just a few weeks, we will dedicate a magnificent set of structures on our mall to the men and women who served during World War II, some 16 million. I had the privilege of going down the other day with Senator Dole, our former colleague, whose wisdom, whose energies, had contributed greatly to this magnificent memorial. And as we walk there together with other senators from this chamber, there are a total of seven who served in World War II. Dole said, yes, the monument stands as a symbol for the sacrifices of those in uniform, some 16 million. But he said it also stands as a monument in testimony of the home front. And those of us who have memories of that period remember how well this country was unified. We had rationing. We had war production. We worked around the clock, not only to supply and equip our troops, but to provide equipment for our allied forces. It was a magnificent chapter in American history that cannot be tarnished by the...